As we have seen, when we have a continuous random variable, we can describe probabilities using the probability density function. And so we have something like a graph f of x and x, and we might have a density function like this, and we find probabilities by finding the area under the graph. So the probability that x is between a and b is given by that area. And so the total probability is 1, and so the total area under such a graph has to be 1. An example of this, as we've seen, is f of x equals 12 x squared minus x cubed, with x ranging from 0 to 1. That has a graph looking a bit like this. It's slightly lopsided, and it goes from 0 to 1. The area is 1. That represents a probability. What we now want to do is to look at how to find the mean of such a distribution. What's the average value of x? And to get this, we relate it analogously to the discrete variable. With discrete variables, remember, we had sigma of p equals 1, that all the probabilities add up to 1. In our case, in the continuous case, that becomes the integral of f of x dx equals 1. So the sigma is replaced by the integral, and p is replaced by f of x dx. Now we can use a very similar analogy to find the mean of a continuous variable. If we remember, x bar the mean for a discrete variable was the sum of each x times its probability. Perhaps I should put a subscript in there. So if we add up each x times the probability of that x, we will get the mean. And so that becomes, with a continuous variable, sigma becomes the integral, x, and then p is replaced by f of x dx. And if we do that calculation over the whole range of x, all possible values of x, we will get the mean. So let's see how that works with this particular distribution. I want to do the integral from 0 to 1, because they are the limits of x, of x times 12 x squared minus x cubed. So it's an easy integral, just needs a bit of tidying up first. We can take the 12 outside, and then we can multiply out the bracket. So we integrate x cubed minus x to the fourth. So very simple, integrating powers. We get 12. x cubed becomes x to the fourth over 4 when we integrate. x to the fourth integrates to x to the fifth over 5. from 0 to 1. So if we put the top limit in, 1, we get 12 times a quarter minus a fifth. And the bottom limit, 0, we get 0 minus 0. So that's not going to have any effect. A quarter minus a fifth is a twentieth. So we get 12 twentieths, which is 0 0.6. So the average value of this distribution is actually 0.6. We saw it's not symmetrical, it's not a nice parabola for which the mean would be bang in the middle. This one is shifted a bit towards the top end, and so the mean is also shifted. The other thing that we can easily do with continuous distributions is find the mode. The mode is, if you like, the most popular, the most common. And in this context, what we mean is that value of x which has the highest density function value. So the mode is at df by dx equals 0. In other words, instead of integrating now, we're going the other way, we're differentiating to find out the maximum of this curve. And if I differentiate that particular function, 12x squared goes to 24x, 12x cubed 
goes to 36 x squared. That will equal naught to give you a maximum minimum. And if I cancel 12s, cancel x's, I get x equals 24 36 or 2 thirds, 0.6 recurring. So that's the modal value just there, and the mean is about here. They're not the same. And the median is a more complicated calculation. We have to integrate up to a value such that the probability of being below the median is a half. And so we, we get a calculation, an equation, in which the median is the upper limit of the integral. Uh, but, and that, again, will uh, differ. You'll generally get three different results for the mean, median and the mode. So let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? Okay, well, I want x on its own. So I would put x equals 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself. But what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on, well done.